All right. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Let's begin our lesson now. All right. So uh, today we are going to talk more on the drugs which are acting on the gonadal and reproductive system. And today our major focus would be on progestins and antiprogestins. Wait. Yes. Yes, Seher, you're right. All right. <clears throat> okay. So uh, after that, wait a minute. All right. So today we'll talk about progestins and antiprogestins. Okay. And after that, uh, in one lecture, I will cover up hormonal contraceptives. And then uh, in the other lecture, I will talk about androgens and anabolic steroids and anti-androgens. I can cover up literally all of these remaining topics in one lecture, but I think it's better if I break it into chunks and you guys are given time to think about it, to read about it. The reason why I, uh, I don't uh, make my lectures really wrong, the reason is only this, that I want you all to go back on that same topic using the textbooks that you have and then I want you to explore on that topic within that period only, okay? So do not leave it for the last moment. So let's start. All right. So the first one, we will talk about progestins and then we'll talk about anti-progestins. I'm sure when I say the terminology progestin, so one of the hormones, progesterone, would definitely come up into your mind. So let's read about it. What are they and how they're benefiting us? So the structure, the most important natural progestin is progesterone. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Let me get the point. Okay. So which is synthesized by ovaries, testes and adrenaline. Adrenal. Synthetic progestins include the 19 nor compounds such as nor ethindrone, nor gastrel, and live on uh, livono, live on, uh, wait a minute, livonor gastrel. All of these agents are potent oral progestins derived from testosterone. Some have androgenic activity. So several the. Uh, several synthetic derivatives of progesterone have progestin activity, including megastrol, med, uh, medroxy, progesterone acetate, and hydroxy, progesterone caporate. Gonads include norgestimate and desogestrel. These agents have reduced androgenic activity. Drosperinone is a spirolactone analog with anti-mineralocorticoid, anti-androgenic, and progestostational activity. We'll talk about these in more detail. Okay. Now is actions and pharmacological properties of progestins. Progestins bind to intracellular receptors that alter the transcription of target genes. I'm sure by now you must have understood how exactly proteins are manufactured. So there are two isoforms of progesterone receptor, just like the one we had for estrogen, uh, PRA, PRB, both are derived from the same gene. Progestins slow the mitotic activity of the estrogen stimulated uterus, cause vascularization of the endometrium. I'm sure you all remember endometrium, the layer uh, which is the innermost one, and induce a more glandular appearance and function. Why is it doing so? Because of the reason. This drug is actually preparing uterus for 
uh, the zygote to get implanted. All right. So progestin slightly decreased triglycerides and HDL, but they slightly increase LDL depending on the preparation and dose. If you want to know more about HDL and LDL, you should uh, watch the video, which I'll upload in a while. Uh, that would be related to the cardiovascular system. It is actually uh, made for your juniors, but you can also look at it. All right. So uh, depending on the preparation and wait a minute. <clears throat> Preparation and dose, progestin also increase lipoprotein lipase. So this is an enzyme that will break it up. So progestins increase basal and stimulated insulin secretion and stimulate appetite. Progesterone is extensively bound to corticosteroid binding globulin in the plasma and is not administered orally because of rapid hepatic metabolism. Progestins are eliminated by hydroxylation to pregnano, uh, pregnanid, wait a minute, pregnanidiol and conjugation with glucuronic acid and subsequent urinary excretion. So the therapeutic uses are Progestins are used for contraception alone or in combination with estrogens. Progestins may be administered orally by deport injection as a vaginal gel and as a slow release intrauterine device. These agents are used in the treatment of endometrial cancer and endometrial hyperplasia. I'm sure you all must remember hyperplasia means that the number of cells increase. Okay. So what happens is you look here. This is the hyperplasia of endometrium. Progestins control abnormal uterine bleeding. Especially let's say when there is a miscarriage. So, um, and, and the ladies usually have spotting. So then they take this medicine so that, um, and they hope it will work and you try and all get thick enough to support the baby, um, the fetus. Uh, this, uh, so, it, you know, it will be protected. It will survive. Anyways, so progestins are used to delay menstruation for surgical and post-operative reasons, and we also use it during Hajj. Okay. Uh, so, Megas is used to stimulate appetite in patients with cancer or AIDS. So, these agents are used diagnostically to evaluate endometrial function in, in amenorrhea. Now, let's talk about anti-progestins, mefepristone, uh, RU486. It's a brand name. Okay. All right. So, mefepristone is a norethendrone derivative with potent anti progestin and anti glucocorticoid activities. Mefepristone acts as a competitive antagonist of progesterone and glucocorticoid receptor. Mefepristone has been approved for use to induce medical abortion in the first trimester. So it is, it is combined with a parenteral or intravaginal application of prostaglandin 48 hours after the anti-progestin to induce labor. It causes myometrial contractions and blastocyte detachment and explosion, expulsion. This combination is approximately 99% effective. It is used as an emergency postcoital, uh, uh, sorry, postcoital 
contraceptive and is very effective if used within 72 hours of intercourse. Relatively infrequent side effects of mifepristone include bleeding, nausea and abdominal pain. Thank you so much everybody. I hope you all will study now.